Hi, my name is Marissa Christie, and I'm the Project and Development Specialist with the Kentucky Center for Ag and Rural Development. We've had a lot of questions about uploading grants to Grants.gov, and we wanted to give a brief tutorial for how to do that. And as an example today, we're going to be pretending we're going to upload a grant to the local meat capacity program that the Agricultural Marketing Service, or AMS, has. So I am actually going to show you um, how to do this. This assumes you already have a grants.gov login. You want to go ahead and do that before you start this process. And you want to do that several, at least a couple of weeks before any grant is due because it can take a little while. Um, so let me get to where I can show you the grants.gov login. And we'll start. So when you actually go to, I'll start at grants.gov. The first thing, and I always say this, type it in directly like grants.gov so that you make sure that you're going to the right website. We don't have as much trouble with this with grants.gov as we do some other websites like sam.gov. Um, go directly to login and you, I log in and you will log in probably through login.gov. So you have multiple logins. So I already have an existing user and I'm not going to tell you all my password. But so here's where you're going to end up. It's going to say apply using a workspace, which we are going to do. But if you haven't done a workspace yet, go up here to grant opportunities. And in this case, I'm going to type in some keywords to help me find the grant. Local meat capacity sounds good since those are all words in the name of the grant. You have a big list here. So what you want to do is click on the hyperlink for USDA. There's the grant, local meat capacity grant. Click on that hyperlink. So this is going to tell you, you can download on this tab, you can download all the things. Um, you know, they updated some documents. There's your RFA the templates, here's a whole grant package, but for right now, we want to hit apply. When you do that, the only thing you need to fill out is the application filing name. Don't worry about the opportunity package ID. So we're gonna say local meet Kentucky expansion, I don't know. So when you type this in here, what I recommend is whatever your project title that you put on your application, the template that you've been filling out, that's what you should put in here. Um, so we'll say title from application template. Don't type that in, type your title in. Um, so you're going to hit create workspace. Now, this is one, if you have not yet gone and printed out the RFA, which if you want to know where the RFA is, if you haven't looked for that, um, you need to go back to the grant. And let's see, I don't think they let you do the forms. So go back to that first screen where it has versions, print out your RFA. I literally do this. You know, I, I've been submitting federal grants for a long time, over a decade. Agricultural Marketing Service, or AMS, who put this grant out, somewhere in their RFA every time will have detailed instructions on what you should put in each spot of this grant. And I mention this because sometimes it's not super clear, but in this case, you can go to page 15 of the RFA. And how I know that it's page 15 is because in the table of contents, it very specifically says, um, Application submission information, page 15. Even if you're not doing the local MCAP, you're probably going to have some sort of guide. And if not, you can contact the agency and see what they have. So you want to go ahead and have all of your things ready. Some of the things you want to have ready is you want to have saved all of your letters of support as PDFs. Hope, potentially, hopefully a single PDF document, like even if you have to paste them all into Word and resize them and then save that Word document as a PDF. Um, if you're in Kentucky, KCARD can help you understand how to do all of this. Um, you want to have that as a document. You want to have a Word document that says something like that 
count, counties affected will be this. So for example, you might say all counties in Kentucky because you don't know exactly where and you don't want to exclude yourself by counties and you want to have your application saved as PDF form and it should already, if you have quotes or anything that should be in the end of the application, you want to have that saved as PDF form already. So these things should already be done or maybe you're going to go in here and fill out these forms early. This is where people get confused because there's an upload, reuse, download button. I actually recommend one that you're using Microsoft Edge and because it seems to run a little smoother. Google does work now. Um, just rather than trying to download the forms using Adobe and then re-upload them, you can simply click on this hyperlink and if you go to page 15, it will actually walk you through what you should put in every one of these boxes. So um, it even tells you how to find what I already found on the bottom of page 15, but it will, you know, the application, it's an application, it's new, continue scrolling, you can't do that. You don't have to do anything in numbers four or five, six, seven. So things with asterisks, fill those out. Uh, make sure your legal name and your EIN match what is on your taxes and on your UEI. When you have signed up for grants.gov, it should already have your UEI from SAM.gov. You are going to put in your address, pretty self-explanatory. Hey, if you don't have an organizational unit or anything like that, leave it out. It's not asterisk. Telephone number, they're going to need that. Your email, select your applicant type. Most of you for this program will be a for-profit business, probably a small business actually. Um, Sometimes if you're doing another AMS program, you can have other applicant types. See there, it, it doesn't like that because um, I didn't select anything. And then you don't have to fill this out. This is already in there. It pre-populated it. So I said have a Word document saved as a PDF that say all counties in Kentucky or counties in Kentucky, you know, the states of Kentucky and Tennessee or if you're near Indiana, whatever. Click add attachment, upload that PDF right there. You're going to put your title right here again. And this is where it's interesting because if you're following along in the um, RFA at some point, it is going to tell you, and I'm looking for where it was, but here's what I know. The letters of support need to be uploaded here. Click add attachments. So that's your supporting documentation is those letters of support and you add those right there, which is a little odd. Your congressional district, you can Google your congressional district. Oh, a fun fact, when you're putting in your address up here, you need to make sure that you have a seven digit zip code. You can see there, I've looked it up for a K card multiple times. Um, so you can go to zip code, look up at USPS and find your seven di or nine digit zip code, not seven, my apologies. So, you know, applicant um a lot of like we're in our main office is in district two i think and then program or project sometimes i put it's usually all and or, or kentucky start and end date of your project make sure it matches your application federal funding if you have any app any of your funding um usually for these projects you won't have anything in here for ams projects this program is actually not covered by uh, Executive Order 12372, and you have to answer if you're delinquent on federal debt or not. You have to certify that everything in this application is indeed true, which is why you don't want to say untrue things in your application. Then you fill out your contact information. Uh, if you're really bored, you can read that burden statement. So what I recommend people do is hit the save button and check for errors. And just to show you, we're going to have an error here come up in a moment after we get done saving. Okay. Now, if you hit check for errors right now, you notice that it says like all of these things are blank. Yeah. It'll tell you that you have blank fields. It won't tell you that you put the right thing in the field, but it'll tell you if you've got blank ones. So you always want to do that and then unlock this form. I always unlock the forms. Um, I'm never, you're not going to be jointly editing forms with anyone else who's logged into grants.gov, so I unlock it. Um, 
your project, you know, click on your project abstract summary. The RFA is pretty specific about what it wants in the project abstract summary. And I gotta get back to my page. It wants your project purpose, the activities to be performed. So I would seriously like copy and paste things out of your application into this, like statements like our project is going to add port processing to this area of Kentucky. We're adding port processing because of demand. We're going to have to buy this and this. Those are your activities. Deliverables, we're going to be able to, pro whatever you said your deliverables were for the project, like we're going to be able to process pork, um, intended beneficiaries, farmers who grow hogs, and consumers who want to eat hogs, uh, eat pork. So you probably don't have if you had any project collaborators, you would mention them here. You probably don't have any. So um, we'll continue on. But you would paste all this in here. Here's your title, your applicant name, and the project abstract. Save. Okay, you would normally hit check for errors. I won't make you all watch the spinning wheel. Unlock the form. Then you get to your narrative attachment form. This is where you simply upload that PDF that you saved as your thing. You'll hit add attachment, and you'll look on your computer for somewhere to find where you've got your attachment. You'll be able to hit upload. So we'll save it. I'm just gonna close it, but you would save it, check it for errors, and close. I'm gonna go ahead and unlock it. And last but not least is the budget information form, and you can fill these out in any order you want. But up here, it actually very specifically on page 17 of this RFA tells you what to put in each box. So you're only going to fill out um, sections A, B, and C of this form. Do not complete sections D through F. So your grant activity is local MCAP-Federal. It has your CFDA number, which is 10.189, the amount of federal that you wanna apply for. And I'm sorry. Um, so in 1E here, the amount of federal that you want to apply for, and if you have any match because you're doing the processing expansion, the non-federal. You're going to, and it'll automatically total that for you. You're going to scroll down to the next one, and what you'll do here is um, you're just going to total all your personnel for the project. If you're doing the meat processing expansion, all you have to do is put your equipment total in here. Or I'm sorry, if you're doing the simplified equipment, all you have to do if you're doing the simplified equipment, all you have to do is put your equipment total in here. The meat processing expansion project, you're going to have to put your personnel, any fringe, if you have those sort of thing, travel, any contractual, um, if you have those sorts of things in there for the totals. And then on section C, just any non-federal resources. So how much you have as match if you're doing the processing expansion program or if you're doing another program that has match. You're gonna save it. You're gonna skip to D, E, and F. Don't, don't put anything in there. You save it, check it for errors, and then close. If there are any errors, I recommend you skip and fix that. So once you've gotten, you can see all these are in progress, they're not finished. At some point, it will, like once you upload it, they will say complete, I think is the word that it uses. And then you can click check application and then sign and submit, and that's it. It will actually come up with a screen that says you've submitted this. I recommend submitting at least 24, hopefully 48 or more hours before the project is due because grants.gov is notorious for getting overwhelmed when large amounts of um, grants are being submitted. So, uh, so sign and submit, and there you go. So that is a short course on uploading these things always make sure everything uploads in pdf make sure you put what it wants where you want it and then go from there so thank you all for taking the time to chat with me or watch me chat about this i, I highly recommend printing out the request for applications um, document because it just has read the instructions like that's start on page 15 read the instructions and if give us a call if you have any questions. Um, thank you all.